I simply cannot make every time a video that Frank Setiastro releases a new script. There's just too many of them. It's a real flood. But there are some which stick out. Some which practically for all of us will be a default and some which really change our workflow. With a perfect palette picker, this is the case. So we have a closer look right after the intro. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So great to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. Some of you might remember that Dylan O'Donnell actually a long time ago, and with a long time ago, I mean about two years ago, created a website where you could enter your emission pictures and it will create all possible palettes. It was not really that easy. You needed to convert your pictures a little bit, but still at this time, it was really exciting. But Frank from Seti Astro revolutionized this obviously like he always does again. And he embedded it in Pix Insight. And you cannot simply look at them, but you can click on them and you have it right on your screen and you can continue your workflow. And there's so many cool things about it. He did not only do it for mono, but he also did it for dual narrowband filters in one shot color. He also normalized the picture, some principal and auto linear fit, which makes that redundant. So there's so many things to discuss. So let's go right to my computer and I show it to you. Okay, welcome to my computer. Welcome to Pix Inside. So I want to show you this new script based on a one-shot color photo shot with a dual narrowband filter, the Antlia ALPT. And here the Eagle Nebula shot with SHO. So mono camera, separate narrowband channels. So the only thing until now that I did, I cropped them a little bit. And let's start with one-shot color. Until now, a lot of people ask the question, how do I get rid of the green? And while an unlinked stretch is a possibility, given that all we're doing here is actually in the STF auto stretch, we're pretending to stretch, it did not really change the picture. It just showed it to us in a different way. So that's why until now I always propose to go to the toolbox and do auto linear fit. I would still propose that as a default if you shoot RGB because this what we're doing now is just for narrow band. But now if we go to Seti Astro and we go to the perfect palette picker, this also does kind of an auto linear fit, which means we can simply exchange one process or one script with the other. So we do not have more on our plate. So we now have to select the picture here, one shot color. We select now this one and we press create palettes. This takes a moment and then they are here. Now I would suggest that you enlarge this window. It really helps because what we should have, if possible, is have the full picture in here that we really see what we're going to do. Now, when we come to HOO, the tool otherwise is not as helpful as with SHO, when you have all three channels available. And the reason is that there's a lot in here which you should not use, which is everything that has an S in there, because you do not have S. And I'm saying this again and again and again, there is no fake S. If you do not have the emission in a separate picture, you do not have it. It's not a possibility to, to guess what S is. Either you know what S is or you don't. With that, HOO you can use, you can use OHH, and you can use the realistic one. That's in principle everything. So we can now click on it and you see immediately in the background the picture is created. And we do the same with the realistic one and with the realistic two. Then let's close it down and look what we have generated. So first of all you see that now this greenish U is gone. So here we have HOO, here we have realistic two and here we have realistic one. 
And what you will see is that they all look very, very similar. And the reason for that is that this all kind of matches. When we shoot dual narrowband, we're shooting HOO. So there has nothing to be done here. Simply when you actually do an autolinear fit, you reach HOO. And when you then actually try to do it realistic, however um, Frank did that, you also still have HOO because, because that's what you have. So which one of these three to take? If you look at it, this here, just from the colorization here of the nebula, I don't like that much. When we now compare HOO and Realistic 2 and we toggle them, you also see that they practically match. There's no difference. And again, it's from me, not hard to understand. So from that point of view, as final HOO and Realistic are the same, so that in principle you only have one viable option to press. It, it, there's no selection. Does it even make sense to use this tool or just go with autolinear fit like we did until now? And for that, let's look at that. I did that now here. This is now same picture as before, but instead of the perfect palette picker, I simply let run autolinear fit over it. Let's compare now this picture with this here. And what you see is that there's a difference here. And I feel like this picture is a little bit less bluish. The stars look a little bit nicer color wise. So I would assume that you will get through SPCC, through the right stretching to exactly the same result, no matter if you use SETI Astro or um, the toolbox. But so long story short, for HOO, it doesn't really do a lot, even questioning if it's worth using it or installing it. Now it is a complete different story when we talk about SHO, so having dedicated HAO3 and S2 pictures available. And by the way, as you know, you can also achieve that with having a one-shot color camera by using two narrowband filter, one HA03 and the other 03 S2, like ASCAR with their C1, C2 or D1, D2 filters offer. So it doesn't mean you should be excluded here. So it's done. Again, make your window as large as you can. Let's zoom out. You really need to see the whole picture that's crucial that you can judge. And perhaps a short feedback to Frank. Probably it would be good if you could zoom out more than the 25%, given that some people have smaller screens, smaller resolution, and they might not be able otherwise to see the full picture. So this is now a complete different story than with HOO, because now as you have all three emissions, you can really choose here whatever you want. And while some um, create some a little bit of nauseating feeling in my stomach, but that's taste, but others are really cool. And if you now really want to look at it to make your choice, simply double click. SHO looks interesting. OHS looks interesting from my perspective, Forex, and then you, if you do not have RGB stars, you would also take one of the realistic simply for having the stars. And when you're happy, you can close this down and look at the results. So here, by the way, in the realistic, the stars, they look at least not very bluish or so. They might be okayish to use, but obviously still better you have separate RGB stars. 4X looks really nice. That would be something unusual. Why not? And SHO, traditional. By the way, always remember that this is just a starting point. And with toolbox selective color correction, you have all the possibility in the world to still modify that 
in, in any way and then to make it perfect. But as starting points, definitely great options here. So to sum it up, for HOO, mm, I don't know. Not really that helpful. For dedicated narrowband channel, SHO, it should belong as a default in any workflow to enable you to be as creative as possible and bring a little bit new colors, fresh color into the Astro community. I hope this was helpful. If you still do not have the repository, you find the link in the description below. There's so many cool scripts of SETI Astro. So see you next time, or should I say next script? Clear skies.